This is the S500 quadcopter using the Pixar 4 flight controller. And by the end of this video, you have all the steps needed to fly your own. This is part four of my Pixar 4 S500 drone build series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the Pixar 4 flight controller with Q ground control. If you've not yet taken a look at parts one through three, make sure to check those out. Now, let's get started. For this video, you will need your quadcopter set up with all the steps through part three of this series. That includes the assembly of the frame, the installation of the Pixar 4 flight controller and the receiver, and also all of the steps in your transmitter. You also, of course, be needing your transmitter. Here I've got the Tyrannus X90 Plus, the special blue edition. You will also be needing a battery in order to power your motors and ESCs for some of the calibration steps. And you will also be needing a micro USB cable in order to configure the Pixar 4 flight controller with Q ground control. The next thing you need to do is download Q ground control. There's a link in the video description. Once you open up the software, you'll be brought to a map. In this map, we'll be able to set mission waypoints for mission planning and autonomous modes. I'll be covering this in a later video. In the top left corner, you can also select this log download option. With this page, you can download logs that your Pixar 4 flight controller has collected during flights. You can view these logs as the black box of an airplane. They save the position and all of these parameters for your flight controller that you can analyze later on. One thing to note about this is that you do need an SD card plugged into your Pixar 4 flight controller in order to save these log files. I have an 8 gigabyte mini SD card and that's sufficient. Anything over two gigs should be fine. The next page is the vehicle setup page, and this will be the focus of this video. In this page, we can set up all of the parameters and calibrate all the sensors of the Pixar 4 flight controller. Now go ahead and take your micro USB cable and plug it into your Pixar. In this summary page, we have seven sections or seven steps that are required to fully calibrate our Pixar 4 flight controller. If you have not done this before, then instead of green circles, you'll have red circles. Mine are green because I went through the setup process in order to prepare for this video. But don't worry, I'll be going through each section step by step. The first step is to go to the firmware section. Here we can update the firmware of our Pixar 4 flight controller. In order to do this, first you're going to have to unplug your Pixar from its USB. Now, go ahead and plug your Pixar back into the USB port. On the right hand side, we can select the flight stack. I'll be using the PX4 flight stack that is in stable version. Currently, it's version 1.10. Go ahead and press OK. Once your firmware update is complete, you will be brought back to the summary page. Now go ahead and click on the airframe page. In this page, we select the airframe we are using. The airframe of the S500 is a quadcopter X. So in this section where it says quad rotor X, you can use the drop down menu to select the S500 frame. If you're using a different frame, go ahead and select that. If your frame isn't listed, you can just select the generic quadcopter. Once you've selected your frame, press apply and restart. In this step, we're going to calibrate the internal and external sensors. The Pixar 4 has an internal accelerometer, magnetometer, and barometer, and there's also an external GPS module. Go ahead and press compass. Now we're going to position the Pixar 4 and the quad in these six different configurations and then rotate it about the axes. Once you have six green rectangles, the calibration step for the compass is complete. Now select the gyroscope. For this step, place your quadcopter on a level surface and don't disrupt it. Then press OK. Once the gyroscope calibration step is complete, select the accelerometer step. For this step, we're going to position the quadcopter in six configurations. Press OK. First, put your quadcopter on a level surface.
Once the accelerometer calibration step is complete, select Level Horizon. For this step, place your quadcopter on a flat surface as if it were flying in midair, then press OK. Once all of your sensors have been calibrated, with the indicator of this green circle, you can move on to the radio page. In this page, we're going to determine the minimum and maximum values of all of our channels. Before we proceed, make sure to select the same model you used in the previous video. In my case, it's model number 2, S500. Also make sure you have an asterisk next to that model to indicate it's selected. Another step is to make sure that you actually balance your receiver. This is indicated with this solid green LED. If this is not the case, make sure to check out my previous videos on how to do this step. For the cal calibration process, press Calibrate, then OK. We'll be prompted through several steps shown in this sentence right here. Also make sure to take note of the model on this right, indicating Mode 2. Move the throttle stick all the way down, and when prompted, move it to the top and hold it there. Then move it back down. Move the yaw stick all the way to the right and hold it there. Then move the stick all the way to the left and hold it there. Move the roll stick all the way to the right and hold it there. Then move the stick all the way to the left and hold it there. Move the pitch stick all the way up and hold it there. Then move the stick all the way down and hold it there. Next, move all the transmitter switches and dials back and forth to their extreme positions. Once you have done so, press Next to save your changes. Once you've configured your radio, select the Flight Modes page. On this page, we're going to be using the Channel 5 and 6 that we assigned in the previous video to specific flight modes and the arming sequence. So, in this section right here, you can select the Mode Channel. And if you recall, our channel for flight modes was Channel 5. And Channel 5 corresponded to switch SA right here. On the page you can see that with channel 5 selected I can move between three different flight modes. For this first flight mode I'm just going to select altitude and this is a basic manual um, flight mode that's really good for just manual flight. I'm going to leave out the other two flight modes for now just for manual demonstration but you can go and select those if you want. For the disarming switch you can see right here on the right arm switch channel. Currently it's unassigned we use channel 6, so go ahead and select that. As you can see, as I move channel 5, it moves between three different flight modes. And if I toggle channel 6, it goes from armed to disarmed. Once you've selected your flight modes, go ahead and go to the power page. In this page, we're going to do a quick ESC calibration. In this top section under battery and number of cells, go ahead and put the number of cells of your battery. In my case, I have a three cell battery. Now in the ESC calibration step, Make sure you don't have any propellers connected, then go ahead and press Calibrate. Then you're going to connect the battery. Once the calibration step is complete, you can disconnect your battery. I'm not going to go into much detail of these next few pages, but instead I'm just going to highlight some of the key points. On the motors page, here you can individually move each of your four motors. I haven't ever really used this, um, I haven't found it necessary, but this is something you can mess with if you want to. In the safety page, there are all of these um, triggers if something happens with your drone. Some of the common ones are if you detect an object, of course you need some kind of collision prevention or additional sensors. If you lose your um, RC signal, then what should happen to the drone? And there's also this geofence option. This is used more for uh, the mission planner and um, to set boundaries, basically. So if you go too far away from your home position or your start position, then your drone can return back to you. All of these things require some autonomous flight modes, such as a return mode. Um, so I'm not going to cover these right now. There's also this tuning page. So once you're flying and if you realize that your hover is um, requiring too much or too little of your throttle stick, you can adjust that here. You can also adjust your minimal throttle here as well. And if you have a camera, then here you can set some settings in order to trigger to take a picture or take um, any videos. 
This last page is the parameters page. And here you can find all of the parameters related to all the different functionality of the flight controller. So for instance, when calibrating batteries, you've got a whole list here. Uh, you've got more camera control. You've got a lot of GPS stuff here. And if you're looking into mission planning, uh, return mode, telemetry, all of this can be found here. There are a lot of parameters, but there are two that I did have to change to, um, to really help with the manual process of flying my quadcopter. And in here, you can search for each of these settings. So calm disarm land and calm disarm pre-flight. Originally, these values are 2 and 10 respectively, and they basically determine the period in which the flight controller will disarm if you don't uh, take off yet. I turned these to negative 1 right now, which means that they're turned off because I was having some issues actually taking flight. So this is something good to have later on so that if you start up your quadcopter and you don't end up flying, it automatically disarms itself, so it's not live. But for my current testing phase, I'm keeping this, them disabled right now. So I just thought I'd highlight these two real quick. Um, of course, there's a whole document on all of these parameters if you want to learn more about them. Now I'm just going to step you through some of the pre-flight checklists in order to make sure that you have everything properly checked before you actually begin your flight. First, make sure that all of your components are securely attached and clear from all propellers. Next, check and see if your propellers are spinning in the right direction. If they are not, then what you can do is take that ESC for that propeller and take out two of the wires and just flip them. And this will reverse the direction of your motor and your propeller. Next, go ahead and plug in your battery. You'll hear a sequence of beeps indicating that your ESCs and your PIXOC are powered on. Next, you have to wait for a green LED on top of your GPS indicating that you have a position lock. This may take up to a minute. Once your GPS position has been established, go ahead and turn on your transmitter. Select the appropriate model for this quadcopter and make sure your arming switch is off. Select the flight mode that you want to begin in. Next, go ahead and press and hold the safety switch on the GPS module. Now step back to a safe distance and arm your quadcopter. Ease into the throttle and take off. That wraps up part four of my Pixar 4 S500 drone build series. And now you have all the steps required to set up your Pixar 4 flight controller for manual flights. In the next few videos, I'll be going over autonomous mission planning with Q ground control. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified when those videos are released. If you have any questions about the setup of Pixar 4 using Q ground control, make sure to drop those in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.